YouTube, what's good? It's your boy Jody Joe. Welcome to Jody's Corner. I have a movie review for you guys for Uncut Gems. Now, those of you guys who used to watch me on the live streams when we were doing those, I talked about how Uncut Gems is a really, really good movie. I think I hyped it up a little bit too much because a lot of you guys went to go see it, gave me feedback, but you guys also loved it too. So I don't really know if I did hype it up too much. But anyway, this is going to be a spoiler free review for uncut gems and the reason why it's spoiler free is because it's not really a popular film like that so i want people to still go out and see it not many people went to go see it and i want to put the awareness out there that this is a really great film and i want people to spend their time to go see this actual film so it's once again i am jody joe thank you guys for being here and watching i appreciate it so this is a film with starring adam sandler in a serious drama film like off top off bat i know it sounds kind of kind of weird when you think about it because i reacted to the trailer and even though i reacted to the trailer i was still kind of taken back by it like bro adam sandler has kind of taken that dip in hollywood as far as like being a leading role daddy daycare the water boy and uh uh, uh the longest yard those days are over with happy gilmore billy madison little nicky all that shit is gone so he kind of left the main Hollywood scene after putting out a few flops and then he went to Netflix and then he was on Netflix and he was kind of stinking the joint up over there and then he kind of faded away into like a mild obscurity and then boom, you see this uncut gem, you see this trailer with Kevin Garnett, you see these black dudes in there, dude talking about, yeah, he's a crazy, crazy Jew guy and I'm like, the, the, the trailer looks serious, it don't like he's cracking jokes at all and that's really the tone of this film. Basically what you got in the trailer is kind of like the tone in this film except one major thing that I believe that me and Sal Ward was talking about. Sal Ward also seen the film, my buddy, and he said it gave him, almost gave him a heart attack because the pace of this movie will lead, have you on the edge of your seat with anticipation, with tension, with nerve-wracking uh, uh, sensations. I mean, really engaging you. And I'm honestly pissing you off. There were some times where I got pissed off watching this movie. And all that is is a sign that the writing is excellent, that the direction is on point, and that the acting is doing its job to the best of its potential ability. And that's what Adam Sandler is. I'm gonna talk about Adam Sandler. A lot of people are saying Oscar buzz, Oscar worthy. I think a lot of that comes from the fact that Adam Sandler was really good in this film because he was really good in this film not doing what Adam Sandler normally does, his bread and butter, you know, doing comedies and stuff like that. He doesn't do that here. So he, it's, it gave us a different element combined with a masterful script, fast-paced, tense, exhilarating, blood-pulsing, piss-you-off, how-can-this-man-live-this-life way and I believe people got kind of carried away with that and they are pushing Oscar Oscar because personally, even though he did great in this role, even though this movie was fantastic, I still can't give him, I wouldn't nominate him for a best actor. That's just only my opinion, but you know, that, that can change. So at the end of the day, I really feel like with Adam Sandler on this trajectory, he can actually turn his career around. So that's Adam Sandler, the script. I mean, I really honestly believe that some of the scenes and the way the script was written was made for Adam Sandler, was made for Kevin Garnett, was made to be like a comedy improv. What, you know how comedies are just like, they don't go off script. Like whose line is it anyway with Drew Carey? You know they're going off script because that's what that's the shtick of the show, right? I swear some of these scenes, it's either this, this writing, the script is just masterful. I mean, masterclass. And the timing from these actors is just on point or it's improv. I'm going with the latter. I think that this script was heavily improv where it left wiggle room for the actors to kind of do their own thing, make their own decisions, uh, feel the scene, feel the area, feel their character and just be free with it. And I believe the director allowed that to happen and the script gave the wiggle room for some of that stuff to happen. That's what I honestly believe. If this was actually written word for word in the script for them to say and act that way, now we're talking with Oscar-worthy screenplay. Now I would say that the screenplay, the script for this thing deserves an Oscar nomination because it's masterclass. The score for this movie was surprisingly good. Didn't expect it to be that way. It was dark. It was eerie. It was ominous. It matched a lot of what was going on. Adam Sandler plays this crooked Jew 
jewelry salesman, shysty, sleazy. Hey, what's up? I got you on Monday. Monday comes. My bad. I said last week. I'll get you Tuesday. Tuesday comes. I'll get you Friday. Friday comes. You got to break his freaking legs before he'll, st and he'll still lie to you. I mean, this guy's a freaking weasel, but he's charismatic. Everybody in New York loves him. He's a New York based jeweler who the neighborhood loves him. He does shady deals. He's funny and slick. He's got this sexy yet fake body side chick with him with a big old fake booty. She looked good, but then you could tell she looked way better if she was natural. Who who's loves him and was riding for him and then didn't ride for him and was down with him and it wasn't. The relationship that he had with this side chick was, was fire because I thought she was one way and then I learned that she was another way. And then you kind of, you don't really understand until like the end of the movie when it wraps up. The ending of this movie is fantastic, by the way. And then he plays this, this, this heist guy, right? Who owes this man lots of money. So it's basically going in the light in a day in the life of this Jewish shyster jewelry salesman who sells jewelry to rappers, NBA basketball players. That's how you get Kevin Garnett. He's in, he's involved with the story. And Kevin Garnett is in this movie a lot more than you would think. He's in about 20, 25% of this movie. Maybe 30% of this movie. He's he's a really big factor to the story. Kevin Garnett, shout outs to you, bro. You did your thing. Um, I really feel like this film was the complete package based on what I saw and what I experienced in the theater. You had acting, script, direction was... Oh my God. It's the pace and the tension of this movie that gets me. That's what takes it over the hill for me. Because it makes me... It takes me out of my environment. And I wasn't going through this man's life that follows him over just it. I think it's Friday to Monday. I believe this movie takes place over the weekend and the amount of things in his life, all the people, all the drama, all the issues surrounding this man's life in a weekend. I, when I left the theater and I, as I was watching this movie, I was like, my life is great because this man's life is is a freaking nightmare. It's a train wreck. I couldn't live a year. I couldn't live a month in his shoes based on the way he is and the type of dealings. And the oh, It's crazy. There is a scene in this movie that involves opening a door. I'm as simple as that. There's a scene in this movie, the most riveting, heart pounding, pulsating, piss me off scene is for something simple as opening a door. That's when you know you're effing with a really good film. When a film could take something so simple, like opening a door, trying to open a door, and make your blood boil, and make you feel some type of way, that's how you know you're dealing with a titan. And this movie is titanic. I love this movie. This movie is greatly acted upon. The direction is fantastic. The score is fantastic. The script is fantastic. This is my number one movie of 2019. It ain't saying too much because 2019, in my opinion, has been a bust. Thanks to the Irishman and Uncut Gems for coming out towards the tail end of this year. Because, man, without these two films, two films on my top five of 2019 wouldn't be here. Both of these are on my top five of 2019. I still need to see 1917. It's a very limited release. Shame on the freaking movie theaters and shame on whoever is not promoting it on the on the company for getting more screeners. I live in Los Angeles and the fact that I cannot come to two theaters right here that are in the LA area and see a screening for 1917 is a travesty. So I have to drive a little bit further out to see that movie. But as far as this one is concerned, this is my favorite film of 2019, number one. And I give this grade an A. I can't give it the plus. It gets the A. It was a tough one. It was hard. not. I was going to throw the plus on it. This was like a last minute decision to go from plus to A. Because I feel like this is not an A-plus movie based on what it has. I believe this movie got considered in my mind for A-plus because of the lack of the quality in 2019. And for that, I can't really do that, give it a, a boost because of the lacking year. This is still a great movie. I highly recommend you guys go see Uncut Gems. Don't go if you're already wound up because this movie will wind you up. 
give yourself into the movie and this movie will not disappoint <sighs> thank you guys so very much for watching that is my review for uncut gems put down in the comment section what you guys think let me know jody's corner merch is down below if you want to become a sponsor of jody's corner which is the end game of the channel click that blue button down there pick your tiers a lot of great perks there for the tiers a lot of tiers perks are coming this week thank you guys so very much for watching i am jody joe and i'm out this thing man deuces